All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to determine if the mean value theorem can be applied to this function, f of x equals x squared. And we're looking at this particular interval for that function from negative two to three. And if we can apply the mean value theorem, we're gonna find all values of c such that the derivative at that point c is equal to the slope between our two endpoints of our interval. And so in order to apply the mean value theorem, we first need to check if our function is continuous and differentiable on our interval. And so when we look at x squared, is x squared a continuous function on this interval? Well, just from looking at the function, I can see that there's no values that when I plug into this are going to give me an undefined value. There's no part of this function that is going to have a gap or a break in it. And so the bottom line here is since x squared is a monomial or a polynomial with just one term, it's going to be continuous everywhere. So we checked continuity, so we can say that that is good. And then if we wanna check differentiability, all you have to do is take the derivative and see if the derivative is continuous on this interval as well. So the derivative of x squared or f prime of x is gonna be equal to two x right, the derivative of x squared using the power rule would get us 2x. And just like x squared, 2x is a monomial or a polynomial with one term, which means it is going to be continuous everywhere. And so since the derivative is continuous on this interval, we can say that our original function is differentiable on the interval. So we also checked differentiability. And so now that we have confirmed that we can apply the mean value theorem to this function, now we can start to solve for our values of c. And so the first thing that I recommend we do is find the slope between our two endpoints. So we'll start by evaluating each of our endpoints, b and a, which is in this case three and negative two, and then we will calculate the slope. So first we'll plug in negative two, so we'll have f of negative two, and that will be equal to negative two squared, which will be equal to four. Right, we just plug negative two into our original function, x squared, and then we'll plug in three. So we'll have f of three is equal to three squared, which is equal to nine. And so now we can find our slope. In this case, that slope, m, is gonna be equal to the value of our higher endpoint minus the value of our smaller endpoint on the function. So that's going to be f of three minus f of negative two. So we'll have nine minus four divided by three minus negative two, right? We just subtract in the bottom b minus a. And so b is three and a is negative two. So three minus negative two on the bottom there. And then if we simplify, this will be equal to five divided by three minus negative two, which would be three plus two. So I have five, and so then this would be equal to just one. So the slope is just one here. So what we do now is we wanna solve for the values of c on this function, where the derivative is equal to that slope between these two points, right? That is what this says right here. We wanna find the values of c, where the derivative at that point is equal to that slope that we just found. So what we'll do is we'll set the derivative here equal to that slope of one, and we'll change our variable x to c and then solve for it. And so in this case, we have a pretty easy equation to solve. We'll just divide both sides by two, and we'll find that c is equal to one half. And so that is the only value of c on this interval where the slope is the same as the slope between the two endpoints. Let's look at another example. So for our next example, we wanna do the same thing. We wanna see if we can apply the mean value theorem to this function, f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus two x on this interval from negative one to one. And again, if we can't apply it, we wanna solve for those values of c. And so the first thing we wanna do is check for differentiability and continuity. And just like the previous problem, this is going to be a continuous function on this interval. Polynomials like this are going to be continuous everywhere. So if you see a polynomial, you can be pretty sure that it's gonna be continuous on your interval. And so we checked continuity. We'll say that that is good. And then we wanna check differentiability. And so to do that, we'll take the derivative of our function. We'll have f prime of x is equal to three x squared minus two x minus two. And that just came from using the power rule for each of these terms in our original function. And so just like our original function, our derivative is a polynomial, which means it's going to be continuous on our interval. And so since this function, our derivative is continuous on this interval, we can say that the original function is differentiable on the interval. Because remember, differentiability is just the continuity of the derivative. And so now we can write that we checked differentiability. And so now we're ready to find the slope between our two endpoints. And once again, to make it easier, we'll start by plugging in our endpoints to find these two values on the top of our slope formula. So we're gonna find f of b and f of a, which in this case is going to be f of one 
and f of negative one. So we'll start by plugging in negative one. We'll have f of negative one is equal to negative one cubed minus negative one squared minus two times negative one. And this is going to reduce to negative one minus one and then plus two because negative two times negative one would be positive two. And so then we're gonna have negative one minus one which would be negative two plus two which will be zero. So this is going to be equal to zero. And then if we check f of one, that's gonna be equal to one cubed minus one squared minus two times one. And so then this will be equal to one minus one minus two. And so one minus one is zero, and then minus two will give us negative two. And so now if we wanna calculate our slope, we're gonna have that m is equal to the value of our second endpoint on the function. So that's going to be one. So f of one, which we said is negative two, we'll have negative two minus the value of a, or our first endpoint, negative one, evaluated on our function. So that's equal to zero. So we'll have zero. And then this will be divided by those two points subtracted. So I have one minus negative one. And so negative two minus zero will be negative two and then one minus negative one will be one plus one, and so we would have two. So this is going to be equal to negative two divided by two, and so our slope is going to be equal to negative one. And so now that we have calculated our slope, we can solve for the values of c for our function where the slope at those values of c are equal to the slope between our two endpoints, which we just found is negative one. So we're gonna have negative one is equal to our derivative here. And so now we're gonna switch our x's to be c's. So we'll have three c squared minus two c minus two. And so now in order to solve for our values of c, we're gonna to wanna to have a zero over here. So I'm going to add one to both sides. And so then if we do that, we'll have that zero is equal to three c squared minus two c minus one, right? Because if we add one to negative two, we'll then have negative one. And so then we have a quadratic that we would need to factor in order to solve for c. And so in this case, if we were to factor, we would have that zero is gonna be equal to three c plus one times c minus one. And if you're not sure how to factor a quadratic like this, you might wanna look up a separate tutorial that is focused on how to factor quadratics like this. But for this video, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that so we can spend more time on the mean value theorem. And so if we set each of these quantities equal to zero, we'll find that three c plus one equals zero. And then if we subtract one from both sides, we'll have three c equals negative one, which means c is going to equal negative one third. And then for our other quantity, we'll have c minus one equals zero. And if we add one to both sides, we'll have c equals one. And so we have two values of c here, c equals negative one third and c equals one that have the same slope as the slope between our endpoints. However, one of these points, c equals one, is one of our endpoints, right? And so we're actually not interested in that value of c because we're just looking for values of c in between our endpoints, not including the endpoints. And so because of that, we're just interested in this value of c, which equals negative one third. So just keep that in mind that if you get one of your values of c and it's one of your endpoints, that you don't need that in your answer. You just need the other values of c that you found. Let's look at another example. So here we wanna determine if the mean value theorem can be applied to f of x equals the absolute value of two x plus one on the interval from negative one to two. Now the moment you see absolute value bars, a red flag should go off in your head because absolute value functions always have a point where the function is not going to be differentiable. And so the way you check that is you set what is inside your absolute value bars equal to zero and solve for x and that's going to tell you what value of x is not going to be differentiable for your function. So we're gonna do that and see if that value of x lies on our interval. So if we set two x plus one equal to zero and solve for x, we'll have two x equals negative one if we subtract one from both sides. And then if we divide both sides by two, we'll have x is equal to negative one half. And so now we found that our function is going to be non-differentiable at the point x equals negative one half. And remember, this is because if you were to graph your absolute value function, it has this sharp point or this v, and that point is not going to be differentiable because it is a sharp point where there is no slope. The slope is undefined at that point. And so while this particular function's graph would look a little bit different than this, this was just to show you the general shape of an absolute value function, it's still going to have that sharp point somewhere in the function. And we just found its x value or its location along the x-axis. And so is this value on this interval? The answer is yes, unfortunately, because it is between negative one and two, negative one half does lie between those two points. 
And so therefore, this function is not differentiable on this interval, and so we cannot apply the mean value theorem. So you always gotta check that. You always gotta check differentiability and continuity before you can apply the theorem. And so in this case, the mean value theorem does not apply to f of x. And then you wanna give our reason, so we'll say that it is not differentiable at x equals negative one half. And so that would be your answer for this particular problem. We just can't apply the mean value theorem because we have a point that is non-differentiable on our given interval. Let's look at another example. So now we wanna see if the mean value theorem can be applied to the function tangent x, which is one of our trig functions. In particular, we're gonna be looking at the interval from zero to pi. And so the first thing we wanna do is check the continuity and differentiability of our function. But what do we know about the tangent function? Well, the tangent function, if we were to graph it, it's gonna be shaped like this. And I'll draw these curves here. And in between each curve is an asymptote, right? And so those asymptotes occur, or at least one of them occurs at pi over two. And so if you plug pi over two into tangent on your calculator, it would give you an undefined value. And if you're not sure why that's the case, remember that tangent is equal to sine x divided by cosine x, and cosine x of pi over two is zero. So you would have zero in the denominator of this function, which gives you an undefined value. Okay, and so because of that, because of tangent x's graph and it's not defined at pi over two, it's not going to be continuous on this interval. So we would say that the mean value theorem does not apply to f of x. And then our reason is that it is not continuous at x equals pi over two. And that is on our interval from zero to pi. And so that would be our answer in this case. We cannot apply the mean value theorem. Let's look at one more final example. All right, so finally we wanna see if the mean value theorem can be applied to this function, f of x equals x plus one divided by x. And that's gonna be on the interval from one half to two. And so the first thing we wanna do always is check to see if this function is continuous and differentiable on this interval. And right away I see we have a rational function or a function that has a numerator and a denominator. And when you see a function like this, you should always be looking at your denominator and asking yourself, what is going to make that denominator equal to zero where I'm going to have a break in my graph? Well, in this case, it's pretty simple. If we set the denominator equal to zero, we just have x equals zero. And so we can see that this function is not going to be continuous at x equals zero. However, it's not continuous at x equals zero, but that's the only point on this function where it's not continuous. But look at our interval. Our interval goes from one half to two. So zero is not even a part of this interval. And so therefore we can completely dismiss that whole x equals zero point. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's not continuous there because that's not on the interval that we are interested in. And so because of that, this function is going to be continuous on that interval because there are no other points of discontinuity on this function. So we can say that it is continuous. And then in order to check the differentiability, we're gonna have to take the derivative of this function and see if the derivative is continuous as well on this interval. And so we'll do that. We'll have f prime of x is equal. And this particular function is going to require us to use the quotient rule for derivatives. And so if you don't remember the quotient rule, I'll put it up here on the screen for you to reference as I go through this derivative. And so when we do the quotient rule, we want to identify what our top and bottom functions are. And in this case, our top function is x plus one and our bottom function is just x. And so we'll start by multiplying x, our bottom function, times the derivative of the top, which the derivative of x is just one and derivative of one is zero. So we're just gonna have one minus that top function, x plus one times the derivative of the bottom, which is just x. So the derivative of x is just one. And then a denominator is going to be our original denominator squared, so we'll have x squared. So this will be equal to x minus x minus one divided by x squared, right? If we distribute this negative to this part of this quantity and this one in this quantity, we'll have negative x minus one. And then we'll see that this x and this negative x will cancel. And so our derivative here is just going to be equal to negative one divided by x squared. And so now let's check to see if this derivative here is continuous on this given interval. Well, what is going to make this derivative undefined? What value of x is going to give us a zero in our denominator? Well, if we set the denominator equal to zero, we'll have x squared equals zero, which means that x equals zero. 
And so the only point on this function that is going to be discontinuous is x equals zero. So just like the original function, that doesn't matter because zero is not on our interval. And so we can say that because the derivative is continuous on our interval, that this original function is differentiable on that interval. So now we check differentiability, so we'll say that the differentiability is good. And so now let's apply the mean value theorem. We're gonna calculate the slope between our two endpoints. So I'll start by plugging in each of our endpoints into our function to get our f of b and f of a values, which in this case are going to be f of two and f of one half. So we'll have f of one half is equal to one half plus one divided by one half, right? We're just plugging a half into our original function. And so one half plus one is gonna be equal to three halves, right? Because you'd be adding two halves to one half, so that'd be three halves. And then this is gonna be divided by one half, which would just be equal to three, right? Since both of these fractions have the same denominator, we can just cancel those out. And we're gonna be left with three over one, which is just three. Then we'll check f of two. So we'll have f of two, and that will be equal to two plus one divided by two. And that will be equal to three divided by two. And now we can use these values to calculate our slope. So I'm gonna make some room so that we can calculate our slope next. All right, so I cleaned up our work a little bit, and so now we are ready to calculate our slope between our two endpoints, which is going to be this right here. So we will have that m is equal to our second endpoint, f of b, which is going to be f of two in this case, minus f of a, which would be f of one half in this case. So we will have three halves minus three, and then in the denominator we have b minus a, and so then we're gonna have two minus one half, and this will be equal to negative three halves divided by positive three halves. And then this will be equal to negative one, right? Because negative three halves divided by three halves is just negative one. And so our slope is negative one. And so now we can set our derivative equal to that negative one and solve for values of C, right? Because we wanna know values of C where the derivative of those points is equal to the slope between our endpoints. So if we do that, we'll have negative one is equal to negative one. And then we're gonna switch that X to a C. So we have c squared. And now if we multiply both sides by c squared, we'll have negative c squared is equal to negative one. And then if we divide both sides by negative one, we'll have c squared is equal to one. And then if we solve this by taking the square root of both sides, we will have that c is equal to plus or minus one. And so now the last thing we need to do is check to see if both of these values of c are on our interval. And just by looking at it, I see that we do not have any negative values in our interval, right? We're going from one half to two, which are both positive. So we don't need this negative one value. So we only need the positive one. So then we can say that our value of C in this case is C equals one. And that is going to be our answer in this case. That is the value of C, the only value of C on this interval that has the same slope that is between our two endpoints. All right, and that's all I had for this example video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.